asked not to search for a weak glue. I asked you to search for a strong glue. Why are you searching for a weak glue? Why are you wasting your time on this? He kept quiet. He continued working on that. He came across one thing which was known as a you know, kind of a tape which can be taken off very easily. He developed one product known as sticky tape. That sticky tape still exists. That sticky tape would, would be, he would be able to stick on the surface which need not to be painted. And then after the surface which has been painted, the sticky tape could be taken off without leaving any mark. Without the need for any sandpaper abrasion, any, any chances of that falling. He quietly went to some other clients and took orders for that product. He booked orders without informing William McKnight. After he had considerable orders, he went to William McKnight and told him the, the entire story. And that's how William McKnight, you know, he realized his mistake. From that day onwards, of course, sticky tape came out of 3M and sticky tape again became a revolutionary product. Again, a result of use stress. And William McKnight from that day changed 3M as a company where innovation became an order of the day. He, may, he understood that by dictating what he wanted, he was actually you know, culling innovation. That's a different story anyways. So these are some examples where uh, I have more. I know I can keep on talking on how say, use stress could be enabler in terms of in, in enhancing productivity, innovation, and order, and maybe even better things. Can you now think of some examples? I'd like to have some input from any participant where you think use stress would have was, was an enabler. Maybe in your case, maybe in somebody else's case. Can I have some, some, some uh, reaction from the participants, please? In your case, where you stress, a positive stress helped you? When we are studying a law, the use stress always helps us uh, to excel, to achieve our targets, to pass exams. And uh, in the days of competition, definitely some use stress is uh, required. Sure. So, uh, definitely we, we can excel. And uh, you may be very competent, part of having, uh, having a lot of capacities and capabilities. Until, unless, you know, you have to uh, pick up. And some you know, use stresses we must to achieve, you know, out of the way targets. Sure. It may be in job, it may be in studies, and even sometimes in personal life also. Definitely, even in some personal life also. In other words, use stress is a kind of a creative tension. It is between what is desired and what is present. And our, again, our wish to take this present level to the desired level. And it creates a kind of a creative tension or a positive stress. Now, looking at the, the other form, that is the distress. I'm just going through some introductory aspects. I'm sure you know about it. But just to appreciate this uh, a little bit more. Distress is the inhibitor. It causes cost disadvantage, status quo, things may not change, things will remain as, a, as they are, and chaos. Two very recent examples, one in 2009, December, uh, September, and one in 2010. Very unfortunate incidents. Two companies, one Precol Limited and another Grazino. Both happened in India. Precol near Kombutu, their vice president, HR, Roy George, was killed by workers who were sacked on September 22nd, 2009. Unfortunate incident. The workers were sacked because they were found to be going on, on, a, on a deliberate go-slow strategy. And the company went into losses at that time. And the, the, despite several attempts, those workers did not come up and they had to be sacked. These sacked workers on, one, one, on September 22nd, they went on rampage. They broke certain office equipments. They hit Roy George with iron, iron, uh, you know, iron rods, and he succumbed to his injuries on that same day. Distress. It's an inhibitor. Another example, 2010, one company based in Noida, Grazino. The CEO was killed by the sack workers in this case. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a inhibitor. It leads to chaos, uh, cost disadvantage, uh, you know, problems. And hence, the idea is here, can we try to minimize this distress? Now, the strategy when I go to, then I'll tell you what is my approach in terms of minimizing this distress or beating this distress told you the first objective of this session is terms of appreciating 
changing workplace and changing workforce and tracing the modern roots of stress. And I said modern roots of stress. I think the modern roots of stress are very different from what traditionally we understand. And I don't want to include the entire uh, dictionary of stressors. What causes stress? There may be so many things which cause stress. But what I am looking at, you are all very senior professionals from our topmost bank in the country. And uh, when we look at this, I thought that we must look at in terms of how workplaces and workforces have changed over the years. And those things, in other words, lead us to some of the modern roots of stress. Do you think workplaces have changed? You have been, you know, in your distinguished service for such a long time. You must have seen workplaces changing, isn't it? You must have seen workforces changing over the years. Do you think workplace and workforce has changed? And if yes, what are the changes that you have observed? Quick, I want some two, three observations if, if it can be from the participants. Times, as you say, and people join, they used to join this well, for the job, but now people join and look at it clearly. That's one, one, one change that you have observed. Very nice. You, you are saying something. Technology intensive. Technology intensive. That is one, again, the major change that you find in workplaces. Technology intensive. Any other change that you have observed in workplace or workforce? Any other change that you have observed over the years? Correct. Means of communication, the way we communicate has undergone a change. So much so that today email is said to be outdated. You know, people say email is almost outdated. It is through networking. It was through networking sites or, you know, our, you know, the social networking. Social media has become the new media. Everybody has a voice. Everybody can voice out something. You know, recently there was a very famous IT company. They introduced some new HR policy and their employees went on, uh, you know, social media sites and aired their opinion and nobody could do anything about it. The company even tried to uh, introduce a social media policy to curb it, but they couldn't. It's just not possible. Everybody has a voice and everybody can be heard. It's not just few people who can write columns in newspapers. They are heard. Everybody is heard today. More communication has altered completely as it is altered. Anything, any other thing change? Well, mix across the social strata. Today, you are treating them as, you know, they are no longer, they no longer matter. So the issue is that you are focusing on people with a certain, uh, who are a reasonably homogenized lot rather than interacting across the cross section of society, which again changes our perceptions dramatically. Earlier, they themselves, you see, when you're interacting with the class for when you're interacting with the class, when you're interacting with different people with different competencies, etc., they constitute a source of uh, a sort of psychotherapy for you. It constitutes your insight into the world as a whole. That means your uh, narrow world itself is not the only thing. You know, the world is larger, you, you come across, you know the problems of people. That, is, that has changed. Workforce interaction with the workforce has also reduced dramatically. You know, as communications enhance, your actual communications also, the dialectics of it is, that they uh, contract dramat dramatically. So your actual communication reduces very substantially, amongst other things. Uh, I know, I, yeah. Two things have to change. Fundamentally, one is the workplace has become much more flat as a result of all this technology coming into the country. And second is the, I think, the sense of power. Empowerment or, uh, you know, the the power equations have changed. People with more knowledge, more technology, more this, they have become much more powerful irrespective of the hierarchy. I think these are two important changes. Yeah, uh, I, I think I'll quickly collate what uh, two uh, participants said. I think both are very val valuable as the other uh, opinions have been. One is, it, you know, you're, it's a virtual workplace. You, you work from everywhere and you work from your home. So you actually don't leave work. When you leave your office, you're not leaving your work. You are actually work carries with you. And hence, it becomes impossible to switch off. You really can't switch off. One of the biggest problem is whenever you are sitting here, your worries may be maybe sometimes some mails may be coming in some on your mobiles also now. Your calls may be coming in because there is something which is happening in the office. And you cannot be completely oblivious of that fact. So it is a virtual workplace which, which, which makes it impossible to switch off. The second, uh, as you said, is as the, modes of communica as the communication has altered in terms of technology, actual communication may have somehow decreased. 
one of the things which happened in one of the IT companies, Oracle, they tried to introduce a completely automated uh, performance appraisal system. They said, we'll completely automate, so much so that the feedback will also come through the automated device. And some of the employees opposed it. They said, you automate everything, but let the feedback come directly from the supervisor. Please do not take out the human element in a feedback. But that's so important. As much as technology is important, that human factor is also important. Just to build on what you, Mr. Sheikh said just now. And the, of course, it has become more flatter. The communication, the way we communicate with people has altered. Let us quickly then uh, look at some of the patterns in this, because uh, we have to move on. The changing workforce, three major patterns. One, the, the huge influx of women into the workforce. This is one big change. Another is the huge influx of youth, which youth, and, and to, if you look at the Gen Y, Generation Y, which is the youth of today, they're completely, their philosophy is different. We live with no compromise, no regrets. And third is in terms of having a global workforce. You have a multi-ethnic, multicultural, multilingual workforce. What is the impact? The impact is very simple. The norms have changed. The social behavior, acceptable social behavior has changed. You cannot keep on behaving the same way as you, ha as you, as you, as you were doing before because there are different breeds of people that you are not dealing with. The cultural expectation or cultural management has changed. The languages have altered. The expectations have altered. And it puts a lot of stress on people, isn't it? Because now things are not the same as they used to be. One of the, I remember as a kid when I watched, uh, I watched one of the interviews of Indira Gandhi, who was one of our prime ministers, and she was asked, what is the most difficult thing that you have faced as the head of a state? She said, the, one of the most difficult things is when I shake hands with other heads of states who are mostly men, they press my hand very hard. And in other words, when you shake hands with a lady, you cannot shake hands the same way as you shook hands with a gentleman, isn't it? You have to have a different way of doing it. It puts us in context that norms, expectations, cultural you know, intonations, languages have all altered, which puts stress on the workforce. If you look at the workforce, three major patterns again, and some of that has already been dealt. Virtual workplace, which is 24-7, 365 days. You have holidays, but actually you may not be, because work never stops now. The world never stops, work never stops. You cannot say that I completely can switch off work today. You cannot. You just cannot. Another major change has been the addition of travel time into work time. The work time is actually now includes your travel time because bigger cities, metros, commute time is enormous. I commute two hours every day. Uh, in my, in, I live in Bangalore. I commute two hours one, up and down every day. A and uh, driving some 70 kilometers every day uh, is a normal thing for me. So that is one major change. The third change is multiple jobs, as, as uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Krishnamurti said sometime back. He said that it was like what, you have a job and you have a job. That was like one job, one location, one life. That concept has changed now. It is one life, one career, multiple jobs and multiple locations. It has changed to multiple jobs and multiple locations. Well, multiple jobs may not be true in your case, but multiple locations may still be true in your case. Put stress. Just to build further on this, I looked at three surveys, some of them Indian, some of them Asian, some of them American. One of them is an American survey, and all of them, you know, surprisingly have almost similar findings. One of them is an Attitudes in American Workplace survey. One of them is uh, Audrey Tucci's Asian study of wellness decline. And another is an MDRA, an Outlook Business Survey in India. And all of them have indicated very clearly if you look at, especially in Asian context, the cost of prosperity has been nothing but more distress. It is the cost of prosperity. Not that we are trying to say that prosperity should not have happened. Prosperity should happen and it can happen even more. But the cost has been more stress for people. There is no doubt about this. Look at some of the general, you know, common findings. There is increase in pulls and pressure. The pulls and pressures have increased. There is a direct impact on work-life balance. Now, although, you know, it is very difficult to say whether there is something like balance or not, but there definitely, it is now difficult for you to know where my boundaries of work finish and where my boundaries of life begins. It's very difficult to distinguish between those, those two. 
Work time includes travel time. There is a chronic fatigue and work stress among people. There is, and this is true. It was surprisingly found. It was true for both larger as well as smaller organizations. Although in larger organizations, the stress was more. But not that in smaller organizations, these trends were not there. It is true for larger as well as smaller organizations. There are rises in incidents of yelling, crying, screaming. These incidents have, at workplaces have increased. Rise in anxiety-related ailments. There are longer working hours.